What are you thinking about? What is your attention when you adjust? The chiropractors who get what I'm getting ready to say blow up. I mean, they blow up to, to levels that they could have never conceptualized. They're going to struggle with this, and it's simple. Love. It's a pure love. One of my favorite quotes, and I want everybody to listen to this. Chiropractors, we are the hole in the flute that the breath of God blows through. When you own that and you step into that role of your calling and understand that there is a universal intelligence that's in control of everything, and when we make that specific adjustment, we do it with love. We do it with passion. It's about being present. This episode of The Chiropractor's Edge is brought to you by Mango Voice. Mango Voice is an enterprise-grade VoIP system based in the cloud. Whether you're at the office or on the go, Mango gives you the tools you need to engage customers like never before. This is a product that my team can't live without, and neither should yours. Welcome to The Chiropractor's Edge. I am your host, and yet again, another weekly podcast of The Chiropractor's Edge. Again, Dr. Jake Hansen here, and I am honored to have one of the best, humblest, Biggest freaking hearts on this planet, huge chiropractor um, who is taking the world by storm. Um, and uh, you guys know him, Dr. Tim Young. Tim's, uh, we're so happy I've been on the show today. Welcome to the show. Man, I, I'm honored to be here. What you're doing is absolutely amazing. We need more people like you. So thank you for having me. Oh, I, I appreciate you being here. You know, it's interesting. We had you, uh, I've heard you speak obviously several times and and uh, twice now. So I've, I've been behind the scenes in seeing the events you spoke at and twice you were voted as the number one. This is the guy we want back. This is the guy that changed us. Um, and it was your message. And it was so wonderful because, I mean, you're, you're a guy who runs an incredibly successful practice. You run focus, but you teach a, you teach a principle of, of utmost love and caring. I love that thought that that comes through is people say, well, hey, Tim, what, what's your trick, man? You know, what's your trick? Do you say this special phrase to people? Do you do this? And you're like, dude, I love them. I love my patients. I care for them. And you have created such a massive success and seeing all these other docs. I, I love going through your threads and seeing four or five threads of doc. Hey, I'm up a hundred grand. Hey, I just took another vacation. Hey, I just bought my dream car. Hey, we, we just bought this other new thing from the principles that you're teaching. We cannot give big. We cannot have a big voice if we don't make money. If you do, you, you can't play big if you don't have, you can't give out of the abundance you don't have. Um, and I would love to talk on these points from a few principal standpoints within chiropractic. I would love to understand, is this something that has always been uh, part of your DNA as Tim Young, or is this something that you've kind of cultivated and only expanded on? I think I innately have it in my heart um, to care about other people. I've always said it. I look back my whole life. I'm, we talked before we got started on writing a book about events in my life that shaped who I am and where I'm at. But it comes from my mother, and I mean, she's still that way today. But I was that kid in 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 grade school and middle school that mowed yards, you know, to make extra money. And I'd, I'd have 10 or 15 yards I'd mow for four or $5. And then these little ladies, I'd mow their yards and then they would call the house and ask me to come back and I would take out the garbage. I would change light bulbs. I would help them do things. And I wouldn't even charge them anything for it. You know, I just, I did it because they said, like, well, this is what you do. And this is what I, this is how I was raised. I was raised in the hills of Missouri and we little country life, hillbilly life is a little bit different. You look people in the eye, you shake the hand, you listen to what they got to say. If someone needs help, you come running. You don't ask what you get in return. What can I do to serve? What can I do to help? That's how I was raised. And so that that type of uh, a mentality or, or philosophy or just my being, I've always been that way. I've always, and, I, and what's interesting is, and I get this from my father, I've always been a servant for other people, but I've also, I've also been a very uh, strict defender of other people. I will, I will go to war to defend somebody. Um, and I have, <laughs> it's kind of, I got stories, but um, it's, it's because I care so deeply for another human being. That's the whole world, man. That, that's just it. And this happened several years ago. Uh, we have a group of friends and they are oil people, uh, attorneys. I mean, some of the most successful people here in Oklahoma that we've got this group. And we went on a, a motorcycle trip across Argentina. It was one of my, my favorite trips, but we got back and one of the guys said something I'll never forget. He said, you know, we've been watching you. And he met the whole group. And he said, we've been watching you. He said, we didn't think it was possible. He said, but we can't catch you. You are nice to everyone at all times. He said, no one is like that. There's what, so what's up? And I was, I was kind of taken a little bit like, what do you mean? What's up? 
like I have a motive because, uh. because the majority of people don't have that mentality of going out of their way to be kind to another person. It's not in their DNA. It wasn't what they taught. And I thought that was really strange because I'm in my world. Why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I don't see it. I don't see it the other way. So it's just who I am, man. I, I love that, you know, and being authentic to who you are and using the talents uh, that you, you, know, you said innately you've had that you were cultivated with, you know, and, and I can say the same thing, you know, my, my dad was born in Missouri and that, that, that's exactly the same thing. You know, he, that's how he was raised. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. With where you're at right now, I mean, you're doing some incredible things again um, within focus and, and you, you are on a mission to, to truly teach chiropractors how to be massively successful. What are some of the first things that that are absolute must? Because I know a lot of docs, you know, when they start their careers, you know, they're they're thinking, hey, you know, I I I seen a table, you know, a table in my hands, and that's about it. But what are some of the strategies that these doctors absolutely have to have? Um, these skill sets, these philosophies, these mindsets in order to grow. What's number one? Because I see a lot of docs put something forward. And that's in my book, it'd be lesson 36. I, that's not lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. Yeah. Where does it all start for you? The number one most important thing for every chiropractor to remember and this is what I preach, preach, preach. Patients, new patients, anything in your practice, they do not come to you. They come from you. And whatever's on the inside is what's going to attract what's on the outside. And if you do not get right with you, then there's no way you're going to build a big practice. If you don't trust you, respect you, love you, how in the world could you ever expect a patient to do that? In my coaching group, just put my the very first video that I put before I teach any procedures, before I teach any technique for anything, it's called personal philosophy. And the reason I do that is if you're not right with who you are, that person that gets up in the morning that walks into the chiropractic office to serve, what they're serving with, where it comes from, if it's not right, then it's not ever going to be right. I don't care how great your marketing is. I don't care how great your adjusting technique is. I don't care how great your procedures are. It's irrelevant. You will not reach the level of success you can unless you get right here first. I, I think it's hard for people to understand because one of the most difficult things to do is to look in the mirror and judge that person you see. Are you good? Are you honest? Are you right? Because simply in, in the way I teach is we have a very simple philosophy. Tell the truth, deliver on that truth. But before you can tell the truth, you have to know what that is. You've got to own it. You have to own what you say. And so that's where I find after doing this for so many years, you know, 28 years of practice, and I've been coached for probably 18 now. The number one thing that I run into is chiropractors don't even know. They're saying things and they're giving recommendations and they're telling people what chiropractic is. But they don't own it. It's something they read or something they they don't they don't really believe but they don't know what else to say you know and so that's that's the number one problem that we run into and so if you want a perfect if you want a strategy to be successful as a chiropractor which i think it's our obligation to not only our profession but to our families and to our communities we need to be successful man you need to know who you are you need to know who you are what you do and why you do it but who is that's probably the number one most important thing brother is is because they come from you. That is an absolute truth. And you guys, docs listening to this, I know this is something that you have to take note of. When you listen to the most successful people on the planet in any given field, uh, especially within chiropractic, you look at the people who have the utmost success. This is exactly what they talk about. All business problems are what? Personal problems. Personal. Um, oh, when you do not have ownership of what you understand and know, um, when, when, you, when you lie to yourself, this is where you start to see things slip away. And, and like you said, patients don't come to you. They come from you. Uh, it's, it's, it's a true law of attraction that you are absolutely going to get what you, what you are. The world is exactly what you think it is. So listen to this truth because this is the guy who has the street cred. This is the guy who's got who is proof in the pudding. If you are not right with yourself, with your family, with God, if you're not right here with your philosophy, your understanding, get right with it. Start there first. We see too many docs that say, no, 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 I need to learn how to do a day one. I need to learn how to do a dead, dead day two. Like those are skill sets that you can master at some other point. But if you're not here, it's going to massively leak through you and leak through your practice. You're going to hemorrhage. Start here first. The program I created you know, to help other chiropractors, I call it foundations. 
And as I was sitting at my desk and creating this whole thing, I think, you know, how did I create what I have? You know, um, we, we've got an unbelievable practice. I was asked several years ago when I was teaching out in um, uh, Oakland, California, someone asked me, is there another practice on the planet that you trade places with? And no one had ever asked me that before. And I've been all over. I've been everywhere. I've been all over this world. So I know all the big practices. And I said, let me ask you that tomorrow. And when I came back the next day, I said, you know what? I've really spent time with this. And there's not, there's not one other practice on this planet that I would switch places with because I've created such a, a chiropractic environment that it, it's absolutely amazing. Well, how did I do that? Because people ask, it's like they ask you, how? Well, okay, well, it's, you know, how do you, how did I, and so I went back to the beginning. I was an associate doctor for the first three years. I started out on my own. My wife and I opened our practice, just like everybody else did. Young, ignorant, just with a, a, a passion, but have no clue. And we created one of the largest, most successful practices on the planet. How? Well, it starts with a foundation, man. I'm living in this big, beautiful home. That's ridiculous. You know, coming from a, the hills of Missouri to where I'm at now is, is crazy. But we, when we built this thing, we had to have a house pad. And then we had to put concrete down. With We have 16 pillars in this damn thing. So this house doesn't shift. Okay, that's wow. first. Man, that's first. You can't put framing up and stem walls. And you can't put a roof on until that concrete is and, and and those pillars are solid those pillars and that concrete the foundation is what's in here damn it you you know i talked to so many young chiropractors who come out of school and they're terrified terrified because they have no idea what they're supposed to do they have no idea they have no foundation at all and so if we're gonna if we're gonna succeed in this profession honestly now, listen, you can manipulate and you can BS and you can market and you can you can do a lot of things and you can make money. Money's the easiest thing in the freaking world to make. Money's irrelevant. All money is, is a direct reflection upon the energy you put into it. But you will yep. never truly be hugely successful. And what and, and I mean hugely successful. Million dollar plus practice with a 20 to 25 percent overhead. Find someone that does that with the pure principle of chiropractic. Not marketing, not sales tactics, not selling anything. Tell the truth and deliver on that truth. That truth has to come somewhere pure, and it starts with the foundation, just like you said. Wow. You know, and a lot of docs, and in, in obviously in this group, uh, a vast majority are entrepreneurs, docs who own their own practices. So they've had that, that mindset. A lot have that discipline. And we have a lot of docs in the group right now who, you know, some are just starting, some are practicing eight to 10 years, some are, are 20 plus. But they're at a point right now where they start to get comfortable, right? And as they get comfortable, you know, once you think, well, what did BJ say? Once you think you're right, that's when you start to rot. Uh And we see a lot of docs who are like, hey, why am I like, why have I hit my ceiling? Or I've I've said, once I get the ceiling, I'm going to open up a, you know, a fourth practice or do this other side business. They realize that they don't have the systems in order to do that. So with you being able to have your, your, your hands in a few cookie jars, what would you say to the docs on that level who who are at a level of, of great success, but they're just not growing or able to scale past that point. What's, what's the counsel you give those docs? Yeah, they're making it too complicated. You know, I, I hear, I see this all the time. I run it. I talk to chiropractors that are, they're, they're successful, you know, they're two or $300,000 a year. And so, you know, they're, they, they feel like they've accomplished all they can in their practice. So like they've reached a ceiling and then, so now they're wanting to open another clinic or bring in an associate or do this or do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm looking at these practices, and this is just my perspective. I hope no one listening to this takes offense to this. It's just what I see. You know, I, I, the way I look at it is I'm, I'm nobody freaking special. I'm a chiropractor. I went to the Cleveland Chiropractic. I graduated in 93. I had great teachers. I have two hands, one heart, and I adjust bones, right, just like you guys do. But if I can see 100, and 100 patient visits in three hours, and that's including new patients, exams, report of findings, Everything in three hours. So I can see two to 300 in a day, in, in, a, in one day, and I can do that three days a week. So that's 18 hours a week. I was received before I did all this, six and 700 a week. Now, it's not about the numbers. It's not about all that. But what my point is, if I can collect 1.2 to 1.4 million a year working three days a week, six hours a day, and, and easily, everyone can. 
So the reason I bring that up is when I when I talk to doctors that are two or three hundred a week and they're collecting, you know, they're they're making two or three hundred thousand dollars a year and they feel like that's all they can do. The only reason they can the only reason they do that is because the procedures are slowing them down. I, I tell doctors all that they say, well, I don't want to see, you know, a hundred a day. Well, I wouldn't want to see a hundred a day either doing it the way you do it. It's too you're making it too damn hard, right? Um, but a hundred a day is a walk in the park. My daughter, I'll brag a little bit. My daughter just started her fourth year in practice here in Oklahoma City. She's on her own. She just saw 398 patients in a week, working four days a week. And here's what's crazy. The majority of them are babies. She saw 78 pregnant women in one day. This young lady is killing it. And here's what she said. Dad, I'm not the best adjuster. I know that. I'm not the best communicator. I know that. And I said, well, sis, because dad, I just care about them. I just care. Well, when you have that and you care, so you get right, just like we're talking about. If you're right with who you are and you have your foundation, now when they pour through the door, you got to be able to handle them. So you've got to simplify. Just tell them the truth. It, it's not complicated. Everybody listening to this should easily be able to see 30 patients an hour. If you're not, if you if you're spending more than a couple of minutes with them, ask yourself why. And don't tell me because they, they come, they pay you for your time. They don't. They do not. That's the biggest lie in chiropractic. BJ said it in the bigness of the fellow within. You spend more than a minute with them, you're robbing their time. But I'm telling you, if you, it, it, the thing about it is you've got a picture in your brain. No one, not one patient, brother, not one patient ever was sitting at home and said, you know what? I ain't got anything better to do. I need to drive across town. I need to load my kids up. I need to go fight traffic. I need to go in and see what Doc did over the weekend. I just want to go spend time with him. Uh-huh. Never a patient ever said that. What a patient says Man, I need an adjustment. You know what, though? Good Lord, if I go over there, I'm going to have to wait because he's talking to everybody. He's talking to me. And I, I got to spend 30, 45 minutes just to get in. And then I'll be there another 10, 15 minutes. That's why I have 70. I have 60, 70, 80 walk-ins a day. Just show up. Why? Because they come for freaking adjustment. And so these are the things we got to get right is we got to start removing all of the things that just aren't relevant. The irrelevant things in our practice, the things we think we should do or things we need to do. It's irrelevant. We don't need to do it. You know what we need to do? We need to freaking tell them the truth. You need an adjustment and then you deliver on and you help them up and you open the door and tell them when to come back. It's not that damn hard. And that principle that you shared is tell them the truth and deliver on that truth. A lot of docs, because they, they, you know, when they lack, what what we've seen is, and I know what you've seen is when they lack confidence in their adjusting skill set or their communication, they believe that value equals time. So that they try to spend more time doing things and it ends up becoming things that are not chiropractic and that then ends ends up wasting their time and dilutes the power of what you just did. Absolutely. Uh, we see a lot of our docs who will say, doc, you know, man, I'm doing great. And, but, uh, well, how, how's your retention? Oh, your retention's horrible. And, and we'll constantly hear them say, yeah, well, my patients said that they felt that maybe the yoga they started doing after we got them better, got them there or the doctor here, the doctor there, because it was all diluted. It was, it, you, you had too much fluff. So you got you doc, it starts right here. Just like Tim is saying, it starts right here. What you focus on, that is exactly what your patients are going to focus on. What you can, what you're concerned with, what you're worried about, that's what they will as well. So when you're able to focus on the truth and deliver on that, you will be able to grow and grow massively. Man, there's just as you're talking, my my brain is just like running a million miles an hour. You know, it, it's one of those things, and I teach all of my doctors this: your patients, the people that come see you. They will only believe you to the extent that you believe you. They will only own chiropractic to the extent that you own it. You made a good comment. A lot of chiropractors are are very, um, they're, they're not certain. They have no confidence in not only in their technique, but sometimes they're pretty good at the technique, but they don't have any certainty in the adjustment itself. The power of the chiropractic adjustment is exponential. You, there is no way to even quantify it, but we don't believe that anymore. The schools have watered it down so much. So we have two problems. The school's watered it down that the, even the adjustment is really not that powerful. There's that. And then on the other side of it, chiropractors have been in practice. Some of you have been for practice for a long time. You start taking it for granted. You just, you, you, you do it all day. You've been doing it for years and it's just an adjustment. Man, no, 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 no. It's not just an adjustment to them. And innately, there's so much going on. You know, I, I did this the video the other day. I kind of lost my mind. I'm like, look, there is a universal intelligence that is expressing itself through every single tissue cell in the body at all times. And then what we're doing is we're seeing to it 
that that intelligence is expressing through that tissue cell. Now, you may have a patient that come in and, Doc, man, I'm feeling great. I have no problems. I don't even know why I'm here. My back's a little stiff. But what you don't know and what that patient doesn't know is that there is a, let's say, a T4 subluxation that's causing that tightness. But what it's actually doing is it's shutting off the nerve supply to an organ. That organ is slowly starting to fail. No one knows it. We don't see it. But you make that adjustment specifically and intentionally. Now that organ starts to reverse this disease process. No one ever knew that happened. Is that just as big a miracle as the person who comes in with the disease and we make the adjustment? The disease goes away that we can see. That's what we forget is the power of the adjustment is so exponential. It's so powerful that that's all we have to do is adjust them. And when you don't understand that, when you don't own that, then you got to talk, then you got to rub, then you got to ice and heat and do all this crap because you, you, you made an adjustment, you manipulated it, but I don't know what that means. I don't know what's going to happen now. And you don't trust in the, you don't trust in God, man. That's how I look at it. The universe sent this patient to you and said, move this bone, get out of the way. But what do we do? We move the bone. It, you know, I use this analogy all the time. I know I get wound up. I love this stuff. Here's the way I look at it. Have you ever, have you ever been in a car with somebody and you guys are driving and your favorite song comes on and man, you're in it. You know, it, whatever song it is, I have mine. And when that song's playing, I turn it up just a little bit and I want no noise. And right in the middle of the, of the solo, here comes a guitar solo that's going to take you home. This person starts talking. And you're like, are you freaking kidding me with this? <laughs> Shut up. Well, here's the way I look at it. When a patient comes to you, God sent them to you. And innately, you're connected. They make that adjustment. Man, that is your song. That innate expression that is traveling through that body, it is pure. And now the chiropractor starts yak, 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 talking in the middle of your damn song. You just ruin the adjustment. A lot of times, I will literally, we will deliver the adjustment. And I literally, it's a pat on the back and I'm walking right out. And the team walks right in and takes them to the front desk where they sent them out. I don't say another word. I'm like, that was powerful. Um, we, we, we talk about anchoring and which is what you're, you're talking about too, is just being able to leave it on that high solid note, because that was enough. That was more than they could ever have had. It's like going to, going to your favorite steakhouse, getting the best steak on earth with the side you want. And then afterwards them asking, Hey, do you want a buffet too? You're like, well, no, I've had what I want. I'm full. I don't want garbage. I don't need, I don't need anything else. I've got what I need. My, my favorite adjustment every single day is the person who comes in and says, doc, I feel phenomenal inside and out. Like I I've had the best night of sleep. I'm getting ready to close a, you know, a million dollar deal today or a multi-billion dollar deal. And I did, I'm just, I just want to be sure I'm just as up to par as I can be because I'm, I'm feeling good. But I want to keep it that way. That, that's what we love to see. And that's what I always say. You hit it. I get patients say that all the time. And I say, great, let's keep it that way. And then you shut up and you deliver that's the it. adjustment. What are you thinking about? What is your attention when you adjust? The chiropractors who get what I'm getting ready to say blow up. I mean, they blow up to, to levels that they could have never conceptualized. They're going to struggle with this. And it's simple. Love. It's a pure love. One of my favorite quotes, and I want everybody to listen to this. Chiropractors. We are the hole in the flute that the breath of God blows through. When you own that and you step into that role of your calling and understand that there is a universal intelligence that's in control of everything. And when we make that specific adjustment, we do it with love. We do it with passion. It's about being present. We used to, the old guys, think about what Gonstead, Gold, Stigafoos, BJ, what did they all say? PTC. Present time consciousness. What does that mean? When you're with them, you are present. You are in love. You are in the middle. You are the hole in the flute that God is breathing through. And when you make that adjustment, man, be present and, and revel in the glory of what just happened. Yesterday, just one of those weird mornings, I saw 20 in the first 30 minutes. And then I, I was doing it in the office. And so we have these, we, we use platinum. So we use these care cards and I'm counting them. And I was like, well, that was kind of cool. How much fun was that? But what, what, but what really hit me was the 20th one in that, in that, in that first 20, she just hugged me. She hugged me on the way out. And it, it was a little, kind of an awkward one. It wasn't really awkward, but she wouldn't let go. And, it, and it, it affected me. It was pure. And when she walked out, I counted them. And then I thought, you know what? Why did she do that? And then it, and then it's like, this is the teaching moment for everybody else. She did it because I loved her every bit as much 
as I love the first one, the second one, the fifth one. Can we just be best friends already, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. I love this. I love that fact because, you know, you and I, we, we've heard the phrase and, and, I, and I know we would stand on the same ground. You can't have a personality driven practice, meaning that everyone can only be like you. But the thing is, everyone loves in a different way and yeah. people shouldn't, you know, people aren't going to love the way I love, you know, my associates. But to see the difference, like you just shared, when you put your hands on somebody, that is one of the very first things that I do is I clear out anything else that just happened from the, you know, the patient visit before the, you know, the, the morning of, or my flight in the afternoon, and I'm focusing there. And the first thing I think is absolute love. I can't tell you how many times, and it is so visceral and I'm amazed by every time it happens, I will touch and immediately be feel prompted to ask questions to check certain uh, other areas that maybe I hadn't checked yet, but you get so in tune um, with people. And I, I had a lady just the other day who, as I literally put my hand on her neck and I typically do not, I do not talk as I'm doing cervicals and I put my hands on her and I had to, I had to stop. And I literally had to turn around and I said, Hey, I just, uh, I just want you to know um, here's what I'm seeing today. And usually when I see this, it means that there's, there's this side of stress that's happening. Um, I can't remove that stress from you, that external stress, but I can help you adapt to it right now. Tell me about that. And I, cause I usually do not have cold conversations when I'm adjusting. She goes, my mom's dying this week. Yeah. And that's, and that, you know what, that's called innate. That's innate. And, and you know, and you know, if you, if you study like, Oh, Jim Parker, he talks about this a lot, but through the years and man, I could, we could do a whole thing about this, but through the years, there's been so many crazy things happen in my practice like that. I mean, things that you can't explain. And if, when I, if I tell the story, people, most people don't believe me at all. Um, but I experienced it. You can't, you, you know, it's, I tell, I used to use a, a scenario. If you've ever, if, if you've ever asked anybody, if they believe in ghosts and they, and someone raised their hand, have you ever seen one? And they're like, they raise their hand. You can never convince them that they didn't see it because they did. I've witnessed things in my practice under chiropractic that you can't explain other than there's a universal intelligence that's control and it's bigger than I am. Just what you're talking about. There's a lot of responsibility that comes when you have a level of your success. Um, you know, you, you have an obligation, you know, not only just in moral and ethical, but by God to be able to teach and to do what you do, because you can silently keep it to yourself, but you, this is bigger than you. You realize that, right? Absolutely. Um, so you, you are one of the former presidents of the Oklahoma Chiropractor Association, and and uh, you had a huge part to play in its foundation, correct? Well, I created it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, this is like this is what you did. Yeah. Do, oh, do you have a love for politics? Can I ask you? Do you have a love for politics, Tim, in general? No, I hate it. I, I hate so, it. So, so tell me, on, tell me on that because I have a lot of docs here who, are, again, they're getting to a point where they're young, Tim Youngs, where they're they're wanting to get to a destination quicker. But they're they're getting that level where they want to invoke true change, okay. and but they're not in love with politics like most people aren't. So why did you do it, and how did you do it? So here's what happened. I'll make a very long story a long story short. So just like everybody, get out of school, try to figure it out. Married, got three kids, building a practice, building a life, head down, work hard, living, surviving. It's what I did. And then work, 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 work. I mean, I studied every master. I studied every tech. I mean, I did it all. I wanted to be successful. And I and, and I, I had three kids to feed, right? It, I mean, I got stories, right? So you go through this. But then in, in our state, like every other state, we have, uh, you got to go to continued ed seminars. Every damn year, you got to go. And I dreaded it. I hated it so much. It was so negative and so pessimistic. And it was just, you know, I would leave a meeting and I felt like I needed to take a shower, right? Because it was just awful. Well, mm. you know, my wife actually one time she said, you want me to go with you? She goes, I would I would never ask you to come sit through the crap I got to sit through. But we had to do it. Right. But I didn't give it any attention because I'm over here building a practice. If this is the, the association. They're asking for our money, blah, 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 whatever. So you get to a level in practice and I get to an age and I get to a level of practice where I now I can kind of set back a little bit, catch my breath and kind of like pull my head out of the sand and look around at what's going on. And then I start listening to the message that the association is teaching from the stage. We're all going to go bankrupt if we don't get pharmaceutical rights. Um, we, we've got to remove philosophy. It's antiquated. We can't have mm. it. I mean, this is the messages. They had a speaker. This is 
one of the things that really hit me. They had a speaker. I walked into the room one day or one seminar and a speaker on stage at this association, our state political chiropractic association brought this person in and his words were, if before you adjust a patient, any patient, you see to it, you send them back to their medical doctor and get approval before you touch them. And I, I about had a freaking meltdown and a seizure. Okay. I turned around and walked out. Then they had this Dr. Seaman come in and he spent two hours bashing BJ and the green books. And I lost my mind. Well, then the straw that broke the camel's back, the, the, the human, the person, I don't even call him a chiropractor. He practiced, he used to practice in Tulsa. He still runs it. He <clears throat> stood on stage and said, and told everybody what I said, we have got to get, we have got to get pharmaceutical rights in this profession. So I'm like, this guy's an idiot. And I walk out. Well, the very next day, one of my patients is a state representative down here at the Capitol. My office is, I can see the Capitol building from my office. He comes in and he says, doc, you got to do something. I said, well, what do you mean, Al? He said, the chiropractors are coming to the Capitol and are going to every single office and they're telling everyone that the whole profession in Oklahoma is going to completely die if they don't get pharmaceutical rights. They are, they're a laughing stock. They're doc, the Capitol, the representatives and the legislators at, at, in our state, are making fun of you all. They're calling you the chiro crackers. You're all the quackers. And he goes, Doc, wow. I love you. I believe in you. I know better. Somebody's got to do something. He said, because I'm listening to this and I want to defend you, but they're doing all these things at the Capitol. I can't defend it. So that next that we just that next seminar, I go up to the guy said and I said, look, um, <laughs> If you don't quit, well, what I tried to do was I tried, I tried to get every chiropractor to join the association to be a part of it, right? We're going to join this association. We're going to make a difference with, from within. Wasn't happening. This guy had complete control. He wanted the money, but you didn't know where the money went. You had no vote. You had no say. It was, it was a dictatorship, and I found this out. So I said, look, if you do not stop what you're doing, I'm going to do something about it. Now, I know everybody doesn't know me very well. I come from a kind of a, a different background. Um, I, I am one of those that um, I used to swing first and ask questions later. I've just, I'm just, just going to put it raw. That's why my son's a professional fighter now. Uh -huh. um, but he got right up in my face and he laughed at me. What are you going to do? I had a very important decision to make at that moment. Go to jail <laughs> or walk away. And my wife, God bless her, she taught me to walk away. So I, I did. I walked out, out of the room, out of the building. I got in my truck. I drove home. My wife was, this was, uh, this was 10 years ago. And I, I said, babe, we're starting an association. We're doing what? We're starting a state association. And she knows when I ha have that conviction in my voice, let's go. So we immediately, I hired a, uh, a, a lobbyist was actually used to be the other association's lobbyist went to lunch with him, hired him, brought him in. He said, I'll work with you for the first year for free because I know what they're doing is crazy. And we hired a, an executive director. I called four, three of my closest friends in chiropractic that I trust and believe in. I said, I'm doing this. Are you on board? Yes, doc. We're in. I took 20,000 of my own dollars and I put it in an account. I asked everyone else to put a thousand dollars in. We got a board of 12 and we started this damn thing. And I mean, we, and I got death threats. I got, you wouldn't, chiropractors in this state were livid with me for starting another association. You know, you're just causing infighting. You're causing a division. You're doing this. You're doing that. I took over. I stood my freaking ground because I believe in chiropractic. I believe in the principles we stand for. I will not allow someone to destroy what all the giants in a profession have worked so hard to create. I will tell you right now, my brother, we have the largest state association in the history of the state. We have more chiropractors than any other association. We're strong. We, we're at the Capitol. We have the best uh, representation. We don't have to worry about anything. If anything comes up anti-chiropractic at the legislation, we get a phone call. Hey, Doc, what do you think about this? It's not good for us. We'll take care of it. Everything is handled because of our reputation now. So with all that being said, First of all, you see a need, you freaking take action, and you feel the need. But chiropractor, if you think for a minute that being out of the association or being, and I hate politics. Matter of fact, my my um my my uh, lobbyist, he says before you say anything, before you write anything, before you do anything, consult me first. 
<laughs> because, because I will come. I have no problem with speaking the freaking truth, man. And I get in trouble all the time. With all that being said, doctors, if you think for a minute that it doesn't affect you, by God, it does. It does. You do not know what's going on. Well, look, look what's happening in Colorado. Look what happened. They tried it. They tried it. Chiropractors are giving vaccines for God's sakes. And if you believe that that's okay, then you're probably on the wrong podcast. But yep. if you, but if you believe that that is wrong, do something. Think about the first 10 chiropractors ever, ever. They walked out of Palmer and went out into the, to the world. How did they serve? Why did they sell chiropractic? There, people never heard the word. They mm-hmm. never understood it. They didn't know what was going on. And yet, because of those first 10, you and I get to have this conversation. What were they thinking? What was in their freaking heart? We can do a freaking uh, a Facebook ad and 10,000 people know what it is. Be the first 10. Put yourself in their place. And now what would you do? Right? And, and that's that's where I try to live. I try to live. I mean, if you can see the, see the painting behind me, I had that commission. That is the very, if you look at that, that is a painting that I had Frank Arnold commission for me. That is D.D. That's his interpretation, D.D. delivering the first adjustment. See the brick underneath of it? I love that. That brick that's in it, that is a brick from the building, the actual building that that adjustment was delivered in. Because of that adjustment, you and I get to sit here today. You think the adjustment is powerful? You better believe it because it changed the world. These true foundations, you look at the greats, what made them great? They stuck to principles. They they had present time consciousness. They were relentless and and they weren't, they didn't sell their, they didn't sell their soul. They didn't sell their truth to earn their buck. Again, no one had heard about chiropractic. And if you act as if you are the only one who's going to teach this person, and again, it doesn't necessarily mean time. You don't need hours upon hours to do this, learning these systems. So again, you guys, we're going to have doc on our website. If you go to the chiropractors edge.com, we're going to have him on our website. If you go to his place, if you go to focus, um, you guys learn, learn from the best, um, learn from Tim. If you're at a place where you have become disenchanted, if, if you come to a place where if a miracle pops up and it blows you away and it's so rare, you're not in a good place because we should expect miracles every single day. Cause what else would you expect to happen? Right. If you're at a place where you're falling out of love, you have success, but you're falling out of love, fall back in love with chiropractic. You have a servant's heart, just like team does. And, and uh, the, the countless people that he coaches, um, Tim, thank you so much for being on today with, with your uh, immensely busy schedule and, and how much you're giving back. Thanks for giving back uh, to the chiropractor's edge. Uh, we truly appreciate you. Thank you so much, man. I'm honored. I, I'm honored. I, I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate this time. I know I get wound up. I, I love this stuff. And, you know, I've been doing this 28 years, at, you know, in action practice, but you know, I've been going to chiropractor since fourth grade. This is, this is what I am. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave you all with a quote. I, re- I wrote this down yesterday and it's my new favorite quote. Stop believing in what you see and start to see what you believe. <laughs>